The Bible says, therefore with joy shall you draw water from the wells of salvation. The Bible says the joy of the Lord is our strength. And you know, joy is a feeling for sure, but joy is a faith, it's, it's a decision. Sometimes I can have joy just because I decide, to, I live with Tammy, and Tammy is just, uh, she's gonna go after whatever's best, and so sometimes she'll say, we just need to say ha, 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 honey, and just laugh off these problems, and I'm thinking, oh, Tammy, please, and she goes, come on now, ha, 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 you know, and finally I get into it, you know, it's funny, you make a decision, something corny, yeah. silly, that this is kind of like, you need to smile right now. I'm, I'm talking to you, okay? <laughs> okay? Joy is powerful. In fact, that we're talking about the Holy Spirit in this series, and the Bible says in Acts 13, I believe it is, the disciples or the believers were filled with joy, and they were filled with the Holy Spirit. And I just, I just think we need to laugh more. I think there's things that make me laugh. Uh, one of them is my grandkids. They're just, just pure joy, they're so much fun. And the, the, some of them are on the front row here. In fact, the one I'm gonna talk about is right here. She's three years old. This is Lulu. Hey, Lulu, can you come up here and see Papa? Can you come up here? Yeah, come on up here. Yeah, put all your candy and gum and stuff down, that's right. There you go, get Papa your hand. Can you hold your hand? So this is Lulu, can you say hi? <laughs> and uh, I, I look forward to church, seeing you. And for the last two months now, uh, she goes to her Sunday class at church here with the kids, and she makes something. Uh, this is my, one of my favorites. This is, uh, they made a, a picture of Noah's Ark, studying Noah in the Bible, studying famous people in the Bible. So I, I, you know, I say, Lulu, are you going to go to class today and make Papa something? And you say what? I say, sure, Papa. No? no? <laughs> <laughs> I remember. I got a picture from her teacher, oh, I don't know, about a month ago, and it was about this one. And the picture was her holding it up, and the teacher said, I just gotta tell you something. We, I was going around the tables and talking to the children about what we're making, and Lulu stopped, and she goes, my papa is gonna be so excited about this, he's going to be freaking out. <laughs> so, you know, you gotta find something that makes you happy. This is kind of one of my happy pills. We've got a world that's filled with depression and gloom and stress and anxiety and pressure, relationship weirdness. Everybody I know is weird. <laughs> Including the guy I see in the mirror. I mean, it's a crazy world we live in. We need, we need the joy of the Lord. Can we, can we thank Lulu? What? You wanna take that back to Gigi? Give me a hug. Mm. Okay, you go downstairs. All right, that a girl. You got it? That a girl. See ya, pal. Uh, I, I just found out we have honored guests this morning from Nigeria, Pastors Ed and Sonia from House on the Rock. Would you please stand? God bless you guys. Wow, so honored to have you here from Nigeria. Bless you. I understand friends of Toby from Nigeria. Now, I want you to know, I've been begging Toby to take me to Nigeria. I, I want to go, I don't know why he won't take me, I don't know, put the pressure on it, but we wanna come. Honored to have you here today. They pastor a church of thousands, been in ministry for decades, and wow, what an honor. Thank you for coming to the City Church this morning with the Carmel Church. One more quick announcement, after this service, right after the service, around 12.30ish, uh, we have open house. If you're new to our church, we'd like to hang out with you. I wanna be there. We get to meet you, you get to meet us. We have lunch together, so right after the service down the hall, room 102, we'll see you at open house. Awesome. <clears throat> We're in a series uh, entitled The Holy Spirit Advantage. How many of you are enjoying this journey? This is good stuff. I, 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 the, the theme verse is, are some of the words of Jesus in the chapter uh, in the book of John. Just before Jesus is betrayed, he starts talking a lot about the Holy Spirit coming. And he makes this statement in uh, John 16. It is to your advantage that I go away. If I don't go away, the help or the Holy Spirit will not come. When he's saying go away, he's not saying take a trip. He's saying go to heaven. I'm gonna leave so the Holy Spirit can come. 
And he says, if I depart, I will send him to you. Now, we're, we're preaching on, we're preaching on and teaching, kind of a preach-teach thing, kind of my style, on the Holy Spirit. And I'll tell you why I, I feel it so timely, because we desperately need more of the Holy Spirit in our lives. We need to wake up to the fact the Holy Spirit dwells in us as believers. And we need to listen and learn from the Scripture. We preach and teach. The Bible says faith comes by hear, and hearing by the Word of God. So I hear biblical truth on who the Holy Spirit is, and then I discover what Jesus meant when he said, it is to your advantage that I leave so the Holy Spirit can come. I want to learn. I want to know. How, how can I use the Holy Spirit advantage if I don't know much about the Holy Spirit? So some of last week, but really this week, I'm going to focus on one key aspect of the Holy Spirit, something that I have believed all of my Christian walk for 50 years, and that is what the Bible teaches, an experience we can have with the Holy Spirit called the baptism in the Holy Spirit with an evidence that comes, with the ability, a God-given ability, the Holy Spirit gives us a language, a supernatural, a spiritual language we can speak called speaking in tongues. And it's, I suppose it could be considered controversial, maybe not today as much as it used to be, but uh, we wanted to kind of erase some of the myths and get into the Bible and see what it says to us today. Because my heart as your pastor, I want to be a good pastor. I want to bring good news to you. And I want to, I want to unpack and, and, and bring a biblical presentation of the Holy Spirit and how he can work in your life, my life, and give us an advantage that we need in these very, very difficult times. Anybody a taker? Yeah, so we're going to talk about this. So, so when it comes to the concept of the baptism of the Holy Spirit, I'm going to read about it in a second, you'll find these things. The Father, the Heavenly Father, the Father, the Bible says, the Father promised to sin. Jesus sent the Holy Spirit. Receiver, uh, believers, Christians, receive. Let me say it again. The Father promised. The Son sent the Holy Spirit. Believers receive the Holy Spirit. The Father promised, the Son sent, believers receive. You'll find this. Let me read the scripture to you. Luke chapter 24, words of Jesus. I will send. He's the sender. I will send the Holy Spirit just as my Father promised. Acts chapter 1, just before Jesus ascends into heaven, some of his last words before he goes away from earth into heaven forever, he says this, do not leave Jerusalem, I want you guys to stay here and wait for the gift. It's called the gift. The gift my father promised, which you heard me talk about, because John baptized you in water, but in a few days from now, Jesus says this right before he goes in a few days from now, you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. So the baptism of the Holy Spirit is a a literal experience. It's not an idea. It's not a concept. It's an experience, something that happens to a believer, someone who knows Jesus. So, so I, I want to go back through, if you were here last week, this, is, this part's kind of like a review. We're going to go back through these passages, and we see repeatedly how important it was in the book of Acts, which is our textbook in the Bible, New Testament Christianity, how the church started, how Christianity began to flourish was through this power of the Holy Spirit. So he said, wait in Jerusalem. He said it to 500 people on this hill just before he ascended into heaven. 500 people heard him say that. 120 of them actually stayed in Jerusalem. And here's what happened. Acts chapter 2. When the day of Pentecost came, they, 120 people who heard Jesus say, wait for the Holy Spirit to come, they were together in one place. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Holy Spirit enabled them. They received the Holy Spirit in an experience and they began to speak in this heavenly language they had not learned. That's kind of a pattern, okay? So it's, th it's there in Acts 2. It wasn't just one time. Let's just walk through a few other places in the Bible and see the same thing happen over and over again. Acts chapter 8, one of the believers named Steve, uh, 
Philip. Philip went to a neighboring community of Samaria and begins to preach Jesus, talk about Jesus the Savior, he's the Messiah, believe in him and you can be saved and be water baptized in his name. Well, people started getting saved and news came back to the apostles in Jerusalem, so they sent Peter and John to go check it out. And here's what they did. As soon as these apostles arrived, that, that to me is amazing, the, the, the immediacy to bring clarity to your salvation. As soon as they arrived, they prayed. Prayed they'd be happy, prayed, I mean, no, pray for what? They prayed these new believers would receive the Holy Spirit. And he goes on, the Holy Spirit had not yet come upon any of these people in Samaria. They had just only been baptized in water in Jesus' name. Then Peter and John, these apostles, laid, notice this, laid hands on them, on these believers, these are Christians, and they received the Holy Spirit. Salvation, receive the Holy Spirit in your heart, you're forgiven. Baptism of the Holy, they receive the Holy Spirit. This second work, this second event, this amazing life-changing moment, they recognize believers, but also receiving the Holy Spirit. Now let's go to Acts chapter 10, which is about 10 years later, by the way, after Acts chapter two, not next week, 10 years later. There's a man named Cornelius, he's a, he's a Gentile, he's not a Jew. But he hears all about the Messiah and Jesus. He's hungry, and he's leaning in, and he's praying and praying and praying. And he had a vision. He had a vision of an angel. An angel came and said, go to such and such a place and ask for a guy named Simon Peter. Tell him to come, and he'll tell you what you need to do. Wow, that was a directive. So he did exactly that. Long story short, Peter is now in this man's house that's filled with people. And they're hungry and waiting. And it says, while Peter is saying these things. What was he saying? He was preaching Jesus to Gentiles. He was preaching, he was crucified, he was raised from the dead, and he says something like this, and whoever believes in him will be forgiven. And as he's making this declaration of what Jesus can do, bam, while he still, look at the scripture, even while Peter was still speaking, nobody gave instructions. Nobody talks about the Holy Spirit. No one tries to explain anything. He's just preaching Jesus while he's speaking. This same Holy Spirit fell upon Gentiles who barely even understood what was going on. And it says, how did they know that? For they heard them speaking in other tongues and praising and worshiping God. Then we go to Acts chapter 19, which is 25 years after Acts chapter 2, when it first happened. 25 years later, Paul the Apostle is traveling around, preaching Jesus and starting churches. He comes to the city of Ephesus, and he finds a gathering, a small gathering of some Christians, people who knew that Jesus was the Messiah, confessed their sins, became Christians. He met with them, and he, his first question how you guys doing? How's the church? How long you been a Christian? No, first thing, first thing, he says, did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believe? This is, we want to we we bring the power here to the city of Ephesus. We got to get some Christians who receive this. So did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believe? And they said, no, we haven't even heard there is a Holy Spirit. So he asked, them, uh, he asked them about being water baptized, and as soon as they heard what he was teaching them, bringing some correct direction, bringing some understanding, teaching them, as soon as they heard this, they were water baptized in the name of Jesus. They already were Christians, but now they're water baptized, and then when Paul, here it is again, when Paul laid his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came upon them, and they spoke in other tongues. Now, I, I, I've said, that there, 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 throughout the last couple thousand years of Christianity, there's been different groups or different people with theological ideas that do not believe in this. Uh, you know, there's supposed to be just kind of a few people in the corner someplace that are kind of strange. But uh, got a problem. There's just millions of people right now tens of millions throughout history, but millions and millions of people, all walks of life, the rich, the poor, the young and the old, every nationality, professionals, name it, people who have experienced this baptism in the Holy Spirit with this, receiving this ability from God, this powerful ability to have this prayer language, to be able to pray in tongues, to speak in tongues. Now, it happened to me, and I want to share briefly my story with you. 
I was raised in um, a Pentecostal, you, you know, if you ever heard the term holy roller, that was the church I was raised in. I was raised in the South, and that's the only thing I ever knew. I was raised on the benches and hearing the loud music and people shouting and praising and clapping. I, and I loved those people. They were very, very sincere. As I got a little older from my little boyhood, I, 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 I kind of was intimidated by their actions, and maybe I was a little like, I don't want to do that. And so I, later as a teenage years, I just wanted some fun, and so I wandered from my church roots in high school and chased after some pleasure and got involved in what my generation was doing in the late 60s, early 70s. Parties and, well, drugs and chasing girls, and drinking, the whole thing. Uh, and and I, I didn't do it long. I was just trying to be, except about a year and a half. I came to the end of my rope. I was a miserable young teenager and still going to church every week. So on a Sunday morning in September of 1971, just as I've started my senior year of high school, I had a major and powerful life-changing conversion with Jesus. For the first time in my life, I became a Christian. Been around it, but became it. Turned my world upside down. Man, the peace of God flooded my life. I was a new person. I was overwhelmed with joy that I can now be forgiven and have eternal life. But you know, I still had problems. I really wanted God, I'd read my Bible, I was praying, I'm going to church, I'm really trying, but I was struggling. Sin was chasing me constantly. The struggles from my past life and the people, the guys, the gals, and the activities on Saturday and Friday nights, I mean, it was chasing me, chasing me, literally. I'm fighting it and I'm not doing perfect at it and I know I'm just struggling and I, I knew I needed more. That was in September, only two months later. I went to Sunday night. Now, now, Sunday night church. Was Sunday night church. Sunday morning church was a little, little more subdued, but Sunday night, not subdued. And, 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 I, and I'm, I'm enjoying it. I'm exo enjoying the exuberance and the clapping and some people just crying out there. I, I like that part. Uh, but on this particular Sunday night, I, I found myself not wanting to be separate from the people who maybe were a little louder or maybe speaking in tongues. Remember, now I'm raising this. I'm not unfamiliar with it, but I just wasn't sure that was me. On that particular night, I lost the focus on it being us and them. I knew I couldn't take it anymore, and I needed more, and I suddenly found myself with them. And I'm in the front, and I'm kneeling at the altar. Back in the old day, anybody remember church when we had altars? Anybody remember that? Yeah, yeah. But my dad and I built the altar in that church. So I'm kneeling at that altar, and I'm weeping my guts out. And surrounding me were a couple, three people, two of which were the youth leaders. We didn't have youth pastors back in those days. We had a couple, and they were the youth leaders, and they cared about me. And they're around me, and they're placing their hand on me gently, saying, Jerry, this is your night. This is your night, Jerry. I can still hear the phrase, Jerry McKinney, this is your night. I still hear them saying that. And I'm crying out to God, and I'm making this acknowledgement. I think I might want more and might even want that. I don't know. And I'm kind of wrestling, and they knew that, this couple. And they're saying, Jerry, if you, this is your night to receive the Holy Spirit. Just ask him. Just ask him for more. You'll have that power that you need. You'll have that victory that you need. Just, just ask him. And if you get this little syllable, this thought in your mind, just speak it out. Don't be hesitant. Well, I was hesitant. And I'm wrestling with it. Not long, three or four minutes. And finally, I just, I just opened my mouth. I said it. Now, that's an important statement alone. The Bible says in Acts 2, the first time the Holy Spirit fell, it said they spoke in other tongues, comma, as the Holy Spirit gave them the ability so they did it. I, I spoke in tongue. The Holy Spirit gave me the ability, but I still had to open my mouth. I had to do something. I had to initiate it. I had to say something. I had to step out of my comfort zone. So I remember that day, I had this little da-da-da, this little, this little phrase, this, and I said it, and it was like something like a river. I don't, not a trickle, something just, just started flowing through me. I jumped to my feet and started just shouting out without anyone not trying. Don't, I don't even know who's in the room. I don't care. You don't like it. Leave. I'm going for God. I mean, it was that kind of a moment. And I'm just, and this went on for, this went on. The whole experience was maybe 45 minutes to an hour. And the church is maybe 70 people, and they're all crowding around watching me. And, and, I, I, and normally I would be kind of really, Kind of conscious that I was completely uninhibited 
regarding what people might think what was happening to me. My hunger for the more and for this incredible thing that had just taken place was much, much, much greater than my fears of what people would think or what, how weird it is. I just wanted everything God had for me. I want more of the Holy Spirit. Laughter came, you ever heard kind of out of your belly? I got this holy laughter thing. I'd never had it before. I don't know how it started. I laughed for 30 minutes. It was deep. It was catchy. I'd look at somebody and they would burst. It was the craziest thing I'd ever seen in my life. It went on for, like I said, about 45 minutes of exuberant personal experience of actually receiving the Holy Spirit and speaking in tongues. Ah, I don't want to do that. Now I'm doing that. Powerful. It was emotional. It was a moment I'll never forget. It radically changed my life. Suddenly, the sin that was chasing me, I'm not kidding you, I felt an authority to say no. I broke off negative relationships. God began to use me. Here I am now speaking and giving my testimony and people are getting saved. I'm boldly standing up and leading. I'm prophesying in front of the church. All this happened to a shy kid who didn't want people to notice. And the power of the Holy Spirit to make me into the man I knew I needed to be and I knew I wanted to be, it came in that place of that experience. And like Paul, that was... Uh, that was 50 years ago, 51, well, a lot of years ago. <laughs> and I have been spirit-filled, praying in the spirit daily for those 50 years. And I, Paul the apostle was writing to the church in Corinth, and he told them, I wish that all of you, the whole church, spoke in tongues. And that would be my prayer, is that all of you would experience Again, and my only reason for that is I know what it did in my life. And I would want that for you. And you know, there's a couple questions that come up. I want to share those with you, and we're going to pray in the end. A couple questions that always come up about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. How do I get it? And why do I need to speak in tongues? Do I, do I have to? Well, not I have to. Of course not. It's something that happens. It's a gift from God. Well, why, 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 why do I need to? Here's a couple, couple of things that I, I've observed over the years. Um, First of all, it, it edifies. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 14, he who speaks in a tongue edifies himself. That word means to strengthen. It means to release. It means to build up and make you better, stronger. And when I'm praying in tongues, by the way, my mentality was when I was 17, just freshly filled with the Holy Spirit, was that I could only do this on Sunday night when we got really close to God and have that louder time, that moment. I thought that's only when I could do it. I couldn't, I didn't know that it was a gift I could use anywhere, anytime. And so I didn't know it until a few years later when God took me to a church. The pastor was amazing. He, he influenced thousands of churches around the world. Great man, great church in Oregon. And there was such prolific manifestations and power of the Holy Spirit, but such amazing teaching so much great teaching, unpacking who the Holy Spirit is. And that's where I learned so much more about how to walk in the Spirit and how to use this gift God gave me. So when I pray in tongues in my private devotions or while I'm walking down the street or after, I mean, anywhere, anytime, it's, it's a part of my life I can use this. It'll edify me. Another thing that happens, I, 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 feel, I feel close to God. I feel the presence of God, the manifest presence. But God's everywhere all the time the omnipresence of God, but there's a manifest presence of God where we're in a circumstance or a situation, I'm drawing near to him and I, I feel like a tangible touch of the presence of the Spirit of God. When I'm praying in tongues, it's like, it's like releasing the rivers of water and I'm experiencing his presence. Another thing is you can experience power. Jesus said it himself, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. Power. Boldness, confidence, influence. God will use you powerfully. Praying in the Spirit kind of releases that. It helps out. And then I like this. I read this somewhere years ago, and I like saying it. Praying in the Spirit, praying in tongues, a spirit language is kind of like a gateway. It leads you to more expressions of Holy Spirit activity. It's like connecting me. I'm praying with this Holy Spirit ability. The more I do, the kind of, it just kind of enlarges me in the moment. And next thing you know, the uh, Holy Spirit reminds me of a scripture. I pray that or even reminds me of someone or maybe a gift of the Spirit starts operating in my life. So it's kind of a gateway to more supernatural activity of the Holy Spirit. So I'll say it again. 
I wish that all of you could speak in tongues. So the second question is, how do I receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit? What do I do? Good question. And, and I, I like using three words when I explain this to people. There's a, many things you could say probably, but three words. One is teachable, two is hungry, three is asking. Three powerful words. Are you teachable? Because we have different concepts Maybe being in a different type of church where it was maybe taught that we shouldn't talk about this, and I'm not saying that compare, not a negativity, I'm just saying we have mindsets. Often, because we're uncomfortable or something we heard, they can shut us down in receiving many things from God. So we gotta be teachable. In fact, teachable is basically saying, I want to learn everything I can about the Holy Spirit. I, 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 I love going back to the Acts 19 story. Paul finds some Christians. Have you received the Holy Spirit since you believe? No, haven't heard about it. So he begins to do some, you read between the lines, he's basically setting them in order, teaching them what they need, and they, because they had a, a teachable heart. Like, who are you? I'm a, teachable. Show us that we, I, we didn't know there was a Holy Spirit. Tell us about it. Some of you here didn't know about this aspect of the Holy Spirit. I pray that you're teachable. You're saying, Pastor, tell us about it. Because if we're teachable and we're open and we're humble, all oh, powerful things can happen in God. So because they were teachable, he laid hands on them. They received the Holy Spirit and spoke in tongues instantly. Secondly, I'm going to move on. Secondly is the thought of hunger. Jesus said in one place, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst, they will be filled. Cornelius, we use his story in Acts 10. I, I, I look at his story, I read between the lines. Here's a guy who is on the, he's a, he's a Gentile, but he hears things and he's just so hungry to learn more. He's just praying and praying and praying and God sent an angel and said, God's heard your prayers. Go send for this guy, he'll tell you what to do. And it says, he was waiting for him to come. That, that, in a sense of anticipation, just hungry. When's he coming? Is he here yet? Peter's coming, he's coming. I mean, and in, when Peter came, he says, we've been waiting for you. I got all my friends and family, we're waiting. Whatever you have to say, yeah. hunger. Now I know it's hunger because Peter didn't get a chance to explain it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's good. Yeah. Let me be an apostle, let me teach you about the Holy Spirit. Let's get you saved and see what happens. No, he didn't get a chance. Hunger surpassed any other need. Hunger is powerful. If you're hungry for God, you'll have an amazing walk with God. And we, we, we have hunger, we have hunger for money and hunger for food and hunger for sex and hunger for pleasure. Those are, they can be good things and they can also be bad, but we have a lot of hungers. God wired us that way. But we have a spirit that's genuinely, and its best moment is hungry to attach to the creator so I can experience him in me. Now I'm working at my finest moment. So we need to, God help us awaken. So many things are pulling me to be hungry, but I, I want to make sure that I give focus and attention to the things of God. I want to be hungry for everything that he has for me. Are you hungry for more of the Holy Spirit? Yes. Hunger just basically is saying, I have a desire for more of the Holy Spirit. I, I love this uh, scripture, Jesus is speaking, and he says, if anybody thirst, let him come to me and drink. If you believe in me, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. Not a trickle, not a rivers of living water. If you come to me, if you're thirsty, come to me, rivers will flow, and then he explains it. Now. He spoke this concerning the Spirit, the river. He spoke this concerning the Holy Spirit, whom those who would believe in him would receive for the Holy Spirit had not yet been given because Jesus had not gone to heaven and was glorified. He's explaining 
Oh, I'm going to quench the thirst of humanity. You come to me and you become a believer in the water. The well of salvation will turn from a well to a river. You'll receive the Holy Spirit. If you're hungry and if you're thirsty, you will burst forth with a river of life. And wherever the river flows, there's life. There's life in your marriage, life on your children, life on your career. Not just life for you, but life to flow through you to other people. Part of the reason, church... Part of the reason we need to be hungry for the Holy Spirit is because we need him. Man, I need him. I'm tired of being burned out and stressed out and frustrated every other day there's a new crisis. I need more, but it's not just for me, it's through me. This river of life will flow in you to give you life and to bring you fruit and to bring you joy and to bring you prosperity and to bring you an open heaven, to bring you healing and bring you revelation, to bring you into the power of God for your life. But it's also, you get so much quantity, it's the river you can't stop. It's going to flow through you. People start asking me when I went back to school. When I went back to school, something had changed. I had the boldness. I started, I had a Bible that side. I thought it was kind of cool. I put it on the top of my stack of books. It was a boldness. I dare you to ask me why I got a Bible. <laughs> then the boldness, not shy, come to my church and find God. Friends started coming because the river was flowing in me and changing me. I was so much happier learning how to have the power of God's spirit and praying in tongues. All that was amazing, helping me. But wow, it started working through me. Shortly after that's when I felt the call of God and find myself prophesying and leading people and getting a degree in ministry, becoming pastor. Bam, 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 bam. Came back to that moment of just hunger, my moment, on that Sunday night was because of absolute sheer desperation hunger for God. And I'm here to tell you, I'm here to tell you. In fact, I, there was a, a man in his first service, he caught me afterwards, we did the same message. He said, Pastor, I gotta tell you, I was like you, I was raised in a Pentecostal church and I experienced the baptism with the Holy Spirit and I spoke in tongues as a, as a boy and did for a little bit, but he starts crying, he said, I, I haven't prayed in the spirit for over 20 years. I, 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 I don't know how I got away. He says, today it happened. I'm, 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 I'm just kind of got a new fresh touch from God. I'm praying in the spirit. My life's going to change. And I'm telling you, wherever you're on the journey, this, if you're hungry, 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 if you're not hungry, ask God to help you get hungry. If, and, and, and how do you get spiritually hungry? Read the Bible, pray, worship. I tell you, one of the greatest things to do to increase your hunger for God is to hang out with people who are hungry for God. Get around some people. Get around people who just got God on them. It just comes out of their mouth. Everything's about loving God and following God. Get around the atmosphere that's going to create in you. I don't know about you. Hey, I'm supposed to be leading this thing. I'm the pastor. But in my, if I could be humble, there's been seasons in the last four or five years where my hunger was getting diminished, getting beat up like you, so beat up by pressures and problems and weirdness and people in my own life, my family. Every other day, there's another weird Christian problem. <laughs> and some of them have my name on it. Are you following me? And, and what was my point? That's the point. And, and yeah, and, and I, you know, I, 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 I've started to just, I found out, you know, I can, I can awaken the hunger. I can awaken the hunger. I said, I can awaken the hunger. I, I can get into spiritual life. I don't feel, I feel kind of bored. Just do it as an act of faith. I step into the world of the supernatural. I step into the unseen world by just read the Bible, pray, worship, hang out with some people who are hungry, and it'll get on you. Get, be careful. You're going to be asking God for more. Why? Why? Why wouldn't we want to live a life with the Holy Spirit advantage? Above it, not below it. Power, authority. That's who we are. That's who he is. That's how I want to live. I want a fresh impartation of the Spirit of God in my life.
I boldly declare I'm becoming a different man. I will be filled with the Spirit greater than ever before, and I speak it over your life. I speak it over your marriage. I speak it over your finances. I speak it over your children, your grandchildren. I speak God is coming with power and authority and a fresh wind in your cell. The rivers of God are flowing. Get ready. It's coming. So first is teachable. Everybody say, I'm teachable. Second is hungry. Say, I'm hungry. Third, ask. When you're asking, you're just saying, God, I want to be filled with the Holy Spirit and receive my spiritual language. I want, I'm asking for it. Now just look at this. Here's some thoughts I had. Some people, because they haven't heard or whatever the reason, have never really asked for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. In fact, there's a scripture in James chapter 4 that says, you do not have because you do not ask. So there is a sense of asking, receiving, I want it. Then there's another group of people who may have asked, I, yeah, I want more Holy Spirit, but I just, nah, I'm not really sure <laughs> what I believe about the, that, the tongues kind of a thing. That seems, you know, so I, 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 I'm asking, but I'm not sure what I believe. Well, the scripture says, Jesus says this, whatever you ask for in prayer, you will receive if you have faith if you believe. That's why we're reading these scriptures over and over and over again to get it in us, get it in us, get it in us so we believe. So much so that the, the hunger ignites an asking. The hunger, I'm teachable, I'm hearing the scriptures, it ignites hunger in me, and the hunger leads me to say, I'm asking for more of the Holy Spirit. And then there's a third group of people who ask and felt like they believe but nothing happened, and they didn't ask again. And that takes us to the words of Jesus again. He said, ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it will be opened to you. And in all three of those, it means on a continuum, meaning ask and keep on asking. Seek and keep on seeking. Knock and keep on knocking. Don't stop, press in. And then in the same context, just a couple of verses later, he says this, in the context of don't quit, keep asking. Jesus said, how much more will my heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask? Ask. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word. So. You know, today we're going we're gonna to practice our faith. We're going to practice on what we've heard. We're going to just take some time. We ended this part early. We have plenty of time. Um, we're going to take some time just to, just to invite the Holy Spirit to come. Invite Him to come. We're gonna, some of you are going to, you're going to feel, you're going to feel the presence of the Holy Spirit in a very fresh and meaningful way today going to be pervasive. You're going to feel something fresh from the Holy Spirit. Others of you are also going to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. And you're going to receive a, a language. You're going, to be, you're going to speak in tongues. It's going to happen in this service before you leave today. All of us are going to experience something more. I'm ready for more. I want to get in the front of the line. I want more. I want more. I need more. I have to have more. So what we're going to do is go um, create a spirit atmosphere, a hunger atmosphere. We're going to worship for a few moments, just, just sing that wonderful song again. You're more than able. Who am I to deny what the Lord can do? Who am I to deny what the Holy Spirit can do? You can do more, Lord. We're going to worship. And then I'm going to feel like I just need to read some of those verses again after we worship. Just kind of set the pace for what we're believing for, the Holy Spirit. And then I'm going to pray. We're going to spend some time praying. We're going to receive from the Holy Spirit. So 
We're going to just enjoy this worship song. Would you close your eyes? You can stand or sit, whatever you want to do. But just cut out distraction, just you and God, you and Jesus, and get ready to receive from the Holy Spirit. You are more than able. Yes, you are, yes, you are, yes, you are. And you are more than able. chapter 2 they were all together in one place everybody in Carmel Church including visitors from Nigeria <laughs> they were all together in one place all of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Holy Spirit enabled them Acts 8 then Peter and John laid hands on these believers and they received the Holy Spirit Acts 10, even as Peter was speaking, the Holy Spirit fell on all who were listening to the message, for they heard them speaking in other tongues and praising God. Acts 19, then when Paul laid his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came on them, and they spoke in other tongues and praised God. I'd like you just to close your eyes. The band's still playing. I just want to